talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep this frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy, see? They've made that something that, that, is, that is, should, should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy bum. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now, here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Uh, hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, yeah, sorry, but I cannot take your phone call. Uh, <laughs> because we're about to embark on uh, a, a, a strange and wonderful journey tonight. Oh yeah, when I first got this uh, I'll tell you, I was flabbergasted. Because finally, finally somebody has stood up to this traitor this vile, evil scumbag that has stolen our country from us. And uh, what we're going to do here in just a moment is uh, join the Heads Up Warrior show in progress because this information came from General Wesley Clark. Yeah, we know who General Wesley Clark is, don't we? He's the man that was famous for leaking the, the hit list the administration's hit list of the seven countries that they wanted to take down in five years. What happened in 9-11 is we didn't have a strategy, we didn't have bipartisan agreement, we didn't have American understanding of it, and we had instead a policy coup in this country, a coup, a policy coup. Some hard-nosed people took over the direction of American policy and they never bothered to inform the rest of us. I went through the Pentagon 10 days after 9-11. I couldn't stay away from Mother Army. I went back there to see Don Rumsfeld. I'd worked for him as a White House fellow in the 1970s. All this is in the book. And, um, and I said, am I doing OK on CNN? And he said, yeah, 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 fine. He said, uh, I'm thinking about it. He says, I read your book. And uh, he said, uh, this is a book that talks about the Kosovo campaign. And he said, I just want to tell you, he said, nobody's going to tell us where or when we can bomb. Nobody. He said, I'm thinking of calling this a floating coalition. What do you think about that? I said, well, sir, uh, thanks for reading my book. And uh, well, uh, he said, thanks. That's all the time I've got. <laughs> really? And um, I went downstairs. I was leaving the Pentagon, and an officer from the Joint Staff called me into his office and said, I, I want you to know, he said, sir, we're going to attack Iraq. And I said, why? He said, we don't know. He said, uh, I said, well, did they tie Saddam to 9-11? He said, uh, no. He said, but um, I guess it's, they don't know what to do about terrorism. And so uh, the, it, they think, but they can attack states and they want to look strong. And so I guess they think if they take down a state, it will intimidate the terrorists. And, you know, it's like that old saying he said, if the only two you have is a hammer, then every problem has to be a nail. Well, I walked out of there pretty upset. And then um, we attacked Afghanistan. I was pretty happy about that. We should have. And then I came back to the Pentagon. About six weeks later, I saw the same officer. I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still going to attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir. He says, it's worse than that. He said, um, he pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. I said, seven, seven countries in five years. I said, is that a classified memo? He said, yes, sir. I said, well, don't show it to me. He was about to show it to me. He said, because I want to talk about it. And I, I, I sat on this information I, for a long time, for about six or eight months, I, I was so stunned by this, I couldn't begin to talk about it. And I couldn't believe it would really be true, but that's actually what happened. Uh, these people took control of the policy in the United States. And I realized then, it came back to me, a 1991 meeting I had with Paul Wolfowitz. You know, in 2001, he was Deputy Secretary of Defense, but in 1991, he was the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy. It's the number three position in the Pentagon. And I had gone to see him when I was a one-star general, I was commanding the National Training Center. I had met him one time. He said, if you ever get to Washington, come look me up. They always say that. 
While I was there in Washington, it was a Friday afternoon. I'd visited Colin Powell. He'd given me five minutes of his precious time and sent me on my way, and I was bored in the Pentagon, and, and I thought, I'll just go, who can I see? I'll, I think I'll see Wolfowitz. So I called and up there. He was available. Scooter Libby came to the door. I met Scooter for the first time, and he brought me in, and uh, I said to Paul, I said, and this is 1991, I said, Mr. Secretary, you must be pretty happy with the performance of the troops in, in Desert Storm. And he said, uh, well, yeah, he said, but, but not really, he said, because the truth is we should have gotten rid of Saddam Hussein, and we didn't. And this was just after the Shia uprising in, the, in March of 91, which we had provoked, and then we kept our troops on the sidelines and didn't intervene. And he said, but one thing we did learn, he said, we learned that we can use our military in the region, in the Middle East, and the Soviets won't stop us. He said, and we've got about five or ten years to clean up those old Soviet client regimes, Syria, Iran, Iraq, before the next great superpower comes on to challenge us. And it was like, you know, I'm coming out of the Mojave Desert. I've been training troops. I haven't been thinking geostrategy for some time. And suddenly, a guy just sort of shoves this nugget at you. Well, you remember it. It was a pretty stunning thing. You mean the purpose of the military is to, to, to start wars and change governments? It's not to sort of deter conflict? We're going to invade countries? And, I, 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 you know, my mind was spinning. And uh, I put that aside. It was like a nugget that you hold on to. This country was taken over by a group of people with a policy coup. Wolfowitz and Cheney and Rumsfeld and you could name a half dozen other collaborators from the Project for a New American Century. They wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down, make it under our control. It went back to those comments in 1991. Now, did anybody ever tell you that? Was there a national dialogue on this? Did senators and congressmen stand up and denounce this plan? Was there a full-fledged American debate on it? Absolutely not. And there still isn't. And that's why we're failing in Iraq. Because Iran and Syria know about the plan. All you have to do is read the, the, the weekly standard and, and listen to Bill Kristol, and he blabbermouths it all over the world. Richard Pearl the same way. They could hardly wait to finish Iraq so they could move into Syria. It was like a laydown. Oh, our legions are going to go in there. This wasn't what the American people voted George Bush into office. Well, they didn't actually vote him into office, but it wasn't what many of the people who... It wasn't what he campaigned on. He campaigned on a humble foreign policy, the most arrogant foreign policy in American history. He campaigned on no peacekeeping, no nation building, and here he is with Afghanistan and Iraq. It's astonishing. So the root of the problem is not how many troops are in Iraq. Please believe me. Don't be mad, if you're a Democrat, at your Democratic congressman because they can't reduce the troops and frustrate the president. That's not the issue. And if you're a Republican, don't be mad at the Democrats because they're fussing with the troops. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you're an American, you ought to be concerned about the strategy of the United States in this region. What is our aim? What is our purpose? Why are we there? Why are Americans dying in this region? And uh, Kathy Rubio is, is the one with, with this information, and we're going to join her in just a second. I am actually trying to clean up a mess. While the intro was playing, I opened up a, a soda and it spewed all over me. <laughs> so luckily I didn't get any on my keyboard, but my fingers are kind of sticky at the moment. So uh, please bear with me and uh, we'll get to this Heads Up Warrior broadcast like right now. Then we'll call in and join it. Thanks. Well, I'll tell you where he stood. He stood fourth from the bottom. Okay, now, in the chat box, tell <laughs> McCain me never this. would have flown in an airplane if it wasn't for his father. His father was the admiral of the entire Pacific Fleet. 
McCain almost didn't graduate initial pilot training because he crashed two airplanes during his training cycle. Uh, the military doesn't uh, look favorably on people that crash their airplanes when they're being trained. And he also came back onto the Oriskany with his A-10 Skyhawk, and he was trailing about 300 feet of hydro wire because he was showing off and he was ducking down low. Otherwise, how do you snag 300 feet on the tail of an airplane of hydro wire? When he got shot down over Vietnam, McCain, what he did was he didn't eject properly. And because he didn't eject properly, he broke both of his shoulders. And that's why he's in a condition that he's in. When he got shot down, he ended up parachuting into a pond, and he didn't protect his arms properly. Again, the wind blast is what broke his arms. When he landed in the water, the Viet Cong went out and grabbed him. He was stabbed in his leg, and he was stabbed in his abdomen. He was then thrown into a cell. He was there for four days. And what happened was the uh, Viet Cong learned who his father was. Again, his father was the admiral of the entire Pacific Fleet. So once they learned that, they took little Johnny to the hospital and they did whatever they had to do to repair him. My understanding is he has a nickname that the Viet Cong gave him, and the nickname is the Songbird of the Hanoi Hilton. And how he, and how he got that name is because when he came back from the hospital, he told the Viet Cong everything. He told them the radio frequencies of the aircraft that are going to be coming in to do bombing runs. He told them that they were ordered to shoot and to uh, bomb schools, churches, and hospitals. He told them the entire complement that was on the Oriskany as far as pilots, the kind of airplanes they have, etc. That's what McCain told them. And because of that, he also told them the flight path that these aircraft are going to travel. And what ended up happening was a lot of the pilots that were coming in on their bombing runs got shot down by the SAM missiles. They stopped. They actually stopped bombing because of what McCain had told them. Then McCain was offered early release. They offered him, uh, I think, on three separate occasions to go back to the United States. And he chose not to come back to the United States, not because he was a hero, but because they knew and everyone else knew that the only ones that were released on early release were those that provided information to the Viet Cong. And because his father was an admiral, he would not have been able to live down the fact that he must have provided information or he wouldn't have been released early. So that's your little Johnny McCain. I saw him uh, recently, um, actually I was on the radio with him on KFYI. In Phoenix, KFYI, for whatever reason, they really seemed to like McCain. And I got on the phone, uh, I'm sorry, on the radio with him. Yeah, I was on the phone. And, and um, I, I said, I'd like to ask you two questions if I could, Senator McCain. And he says, go ahead. And I said, well, you've been a senator for, what, around 25, 26 years. And how is it that you wouldn't know that the National Defense Authorization Act is illegal and unconstitutional? He said, you don't know what you're talking about. And uh, then I got disconnected. <laughs> and what I did was, what I did was, I sent a copy of the judge's order. The judge, it was a uh, federal judge in New York City. I think uh, four reporters went to her. Uh, it, well, first of all, I don't know if many of your listeners are even aware of what the National Defense Authorization Act is. So let me just explain that for a moment, if I can. What that does is it gives the president the authority to put anybody that he wants in prison. They disappear. There's no Miranda rights. There's no attorneys. There's no nothing. You, there's no habeas corpus. The person just disappears. McCain and Carl Levine, Carl Levine's a Democratic senator, they're the ones that put that together, and Obama signed it into law at the beginning of last year. So McCain and uh, Carl Levine created this document that, again, gave Obama this unbelievable power. And I ended up sending the judge's order because four newspaper reporters went to a federal judge and said, this is really terrifying. If we say anything that uh, Obama doesn't like, he can have us disappear. So the judge ruled it to be unconstitutional. 
and a number of the states have also ruled to be unconstitutional. This is what McCain put into place. The other thing that people may or may not be aware of with McCain is he's spending an awful lot of time at the White House. Now, he's a frequent guest at the White House, and he's there to meet with Barack Hussein Obama. And I don't think that uh, the American people are aware of how close he is to the Democratic side. And he's known as, as a rhino. In my videos that I make of him, and I probably have 45 or maybe 50 videos on just McCain. Uh, yeah, at least. There's 45 or 50 videos just on McCain. And I refer to him as lame brain Senator McCain or the songbird of the Hanoi Hilton for the reasons that I've already told you. Uh, I don't like the man. I don't respect the man. And matter of fact, uh, I just saw that he did No. Well, Time Warner, uh, they said to retire. You are now in the house, King. That is what IBM did. And they said, you know what, we're no longer going to uh, be looking after your health care. We're going to give you a set amount of money, and you go have a nice day and find it at the exchanges. Well, really, what are they going to do? The health care has gone up so high, the companies can't pay. Or they're not going to make any profit. It's all going to go out to the insurance companies. Yeah, well, Obama doesn't want old people around. No, he doesn't. No, you know, this October 1st thing was supposed to, these uh, inspections weren't supposed to start till October 1st, but already I got a call today in Virginia Then a person out there got visited today. Or, I'm sorry, last week, not today. So it's already started, and we got our notice, and we'll right away the first week of October, they'll be in here uh, looking around, so... Wow. I thought that maybe, you know, I really would like to stop right about now and speak to the military. So, uh, and to tell you guys, please, 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 stand up. We need you all to stand up and stand down. Don't take any more orders from this guy. He is not your president. He's nobody's president. We need you guys to stand up and take care of your families and friends here. We can't do it any other way. We're not going to come out of this any other way. And, you know, I, I can go back to remembering in Honduras when they, when they picked that president up at 6 in the morning in his pajamas and said, what country you want to go to, goodbye. Mm -hmm. And they put him on the plane. That's just a thought. But we might be at that point oh. to spare the rest of us. I think, Kathy, I think we're beyond that point. And the reason that is is that Obama's had five years to reorganize and infiltrate uh, so many key positions. He has Muslims, he has extremists in so many key positions. I don't think uh, that's going to happen. I don't think there's any way we can get rid of him, even if he were to Slaughtered children on the White House steps, no one would care. No one would care. Oh, I hope that's not so. I really do. Have you ever noticed that whenever Obama flies anywhere, he doesn't take his dog bull with him in the same airplane? Uh, no. Yeah, well, you might want to focus in on that because there's a reason for that. Uh-huh. Muslims cannot be in the same confined space with the dog. They consider them to be, you know, dirty. And they're okay if they're outside, like in the Rose Garden, but they can't be with them if they're in a confined space. And that's why the dog never goes in the same plane as Barack Obama. It'll go with the wife, if that's even the wife. Hmm. Unmuted. That makes sense. Have you ever noticed the biceps on Michelle? Oh, I sure have. And yep. Is it possible that she was under the heat? It's possible. You know, we just are losing you for some reason. Am I not there? Uh, no, you're fading out bad, like maybe your phone is fading. No, the Internet. No, you're perfectly clear. I can hear you perfectly well. 
Leanne, what's going on? You can hear... Do you hear me scrambled? Uh, I don't hear you scramble. I hear a bit of a... It, it's gone now. I heard a bit of a hum. Maybe... Leanne? Maybe it's NSA. That's... I believe it is. And what they do is they filter me out. So if you guys lose me, you just keep going. Okay. Okay, you got Bobby on? Yep. All right, so if you lose me, you just keep calling. I'll call in on the phone. Okay. I can still hear you. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, so um, Obama will never fly with the dog, and uh, the reason, once again, is because they consider them to be unclean animals. I was well, amazed. I, I know he's a Muslim. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> long ago. Yeah. Well, if, when he was in Cairo giving a speech, he said, I am one of them. Yeah. And in his book that he didn't write, that Bill Ayers wrote for him, he said that if the winds change against the Muslims, I'll be with them. No, he did write that. Uh, what but you? you want to know something that's interesting? In the audio version of that book, that phrase has been uh, deleted. He didn't say that in the audio version because I, I really uh, wanted to get that audio clip but uh, unfortunately, in Barack Obama's books, his uh, audio book, Dreams of My Father, that particular paragraph is not in the audio version of the book, but it is in the paperback version. Yeah, no, I, I recall that, Pastor. You know, no, that's Gabe. Gabe, that's um, Bobby Powell that's on there. Wow. Sounds hey, sound like Pastor. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, he, you know, if you want to go back to the beginning of Obama, he was, uh, I, I used to work by the FBI, and, and they knew that. And I think Obama was created, once again, he was as Mark as Joe, and he was created by King of Saudi Arabia, King Abdullah. King Abdullah was about 32 years old at that time. And I believe that King Abdullah decided that they're going to take over the United States and one thing the Muslims have is they have a lot of patience. They're in no rush to do anything to achieve their objective. And the reason I say all this is because if you... Did you ever read anything about the postman? Bill Ayers' mother's postman? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, so Bill Ayers' mother's postman used to deliver mail, and quite often she'd be outside... And he would talk to her. And one day she said to him that, uh, you know, we're paying to educate a Kenyan nationalist. And the postman didn't think much of it. And then about six months later, Obama was standing in front of the house. And the postman introduced himself. And the postman was introduced to Barack Obama. And... They were chatting, and he said, I'm here to thank the heirs for having paid for my education. And the postman said, well, what are you going to do when you graduate? You know what Obama said? Well, I'm going to be president. Yeah. Now, why do you think Saudi Arabia would have given $20 million to Harvard 30 years ago when Obama was supposedly a student there? 30 years ago, $20 million is like $50 million today. Saudi Arabia gave Harvard $20 million. And that's why there's no documents, and that's why Obama can say that's where he graduated from. History is going to prove that Obama was, in fact, an Indonesia citizen. He was given admission to Harvard and to Occidental uh, on a, uh, a visa under affirmative action. That's what it's going to prove. And I don't doubt that a bit. Is somebody typing? Uh, yeah, that would be me. I'm not. <laughs> oh, I need you to quit that, please, Sorry, or, or mute. Okay, uh, <laughs> Kathy, uh, earlier, you know, we talked and you told me something very exciting, and I'm just chomping at the bit wanting to get to it. You said that uh, you had information about uh, some generals that told Mr. Obama that 
you know, he needs to straighten up or fly right, or he's going to be swinging on the end of a rope. Can you tell us about that? Mike, you were that is right, Bobby. Yeah, yeah. they had a meeting. They did. There were several generals that went in to have a meeting with Obama, and they told him that he's either going to start flying right or he's done in more ways than one. And so uh, that was yesterday, and then all of a sudden the story changes today, and now you've got Putin clearing him right. and helping him out here. So we'll see what they actually do now. I, this speech tonight, I hate listening to Obama's voice, but I am going to listen to yeah, this speech because it's important. Can you where you got this information? Yeah, um, indirectly it came through Stu Webb, and Stu got it from Ramsey Clark, General Ramsey Clark. General Ramsey and, Clark. And Stu had worked directly with the Pentagon, so he was getting that information out of the Pentagon. Okay. Do you have any idea which generals are involved in this? Was he that specifically with his information? No, I do not. Not yet. Well, dang. Not I'm yet. here to tell you, sweetheart. It's sure just exciting. Want. It really is. Yeah, we if are, you want, I, knew, but, uh, I always knew that our military would not let us down, that they would stand by their oath. No, I don't. They would stand they, with the Constitution, and eventually they would take this unconstitutional, illegal, alien, pulse smoking, child murdering bastard down. Hey, watch yourself how you really feel. Yeah, well, go yeah, for it. Yeah. <laughs> So, no, uh, it, Larry it's, uh, is, uh, is 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 scheduled to be on in, on my show, and and I'm gonna go into his relationship with Barack Obama. Uh, you see, Obama's got a pathological uh, uh, aspect to his homosexuality. He likes to get blown by older white men. It's a power trip with him. That that's his uh, his uh, thing. He likes to have older well, white, older white, white on men their knees, they must uh, like slaves. He's doing coke off the top of their bald skulls. Yeah. He likes black guys too, because he's got his buddy Reggie Love, you know, so he likes I don't think he cares where he gets it. <laughs> yeah, every you know oh, how many <laughs> of uh, his former lovers from that one church, Trinity, are now dead? Like three or four? The the yeah. past, the pastor there. Uh had this what he called the down low club for all of the black homosexuals that you know he would arrange their marriages that's why he uh obama is married to this ugly skank that uh looks more like the salt sucking monster from that star trek episode where he goes, oh my! you know the, <laughs> she, she yeah, I swear, me. you can just tell i mean it's not the color of her skin black women can be absolutely beautiful just like uh Women of any color. You can see the evil on her face. That's what makes her ugly. Yeah. You can just see it. She's a hate filled person. And I don't I don't know how anybody can fawn over her. She's just evil. She's vile. She's scum. <laughs> That's how I feel. How do you know that how do you know that uh, that she's not a he? Well, uh, I don't there know. Was a I, I really haven't looked that much. There was uh, there was a, a photograph. There was a photograph of her in a green dress, and I swear to God, it looked like she had a package. <laughs> and I made a video of that last year. It looked like you know there was something down where it shouldn't be. <laughs> and if Obama, if Obama is a true homosexual, which is what the general consensus is, if he's a true homosexual, then those children aren't his, or if they are his, they weren't produced naturally. They were artificially inseminated, well, yeah, if they're even his. And he could be a bisexual or a trisexual or, you know. No, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not bisexual, no. He's not bisexual, goes both ways. No, he's homosexual. According, according to everything that I've ever read about him, he's homosexual. Yeah, well, there's a and, 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 been told about it as a lie. Yeah, well, I think Michelle was Michael at one time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real yeah, surprising. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's let's put the gossip down for a 
yeah, I've, I've got some uh, some breaking news out of Syria that I would like to share with you guys. Uh, okay, you know, we know that uh, it was al-Qaeda terrorists that uh, killed all those children with chemical weapons. We know that it was not Bashar Assad that launched those weapons. How do we know this? Because we have a video of them doing it, and my viewers are looking at that video right now. At least they will be in just a second. And, you know, I was watching this video while, uh, while John Kerry was delivering his speech about how bad Bashar Assad was and, and how uh, the Syrian regime were the ones using these chemical weapons. I'm listening to John Kerry say that. And at the same time, I'm watching this video that you're watching right now of uh, al-Qaeda terrorists loading an obviously improvised munition onto this cannon. Okay, and the lies that I heard out of Kerry's mouth just made me want to throw a brick through my television set. But since I don't have any money to replace a television set, I restrained myself. But here, these guys, look at this. These guys are terrorists. They're not. They're not uh, Syrian army. And uh, you know, I'm listening to Kerry and watching him lie, and it was just making me sick. Bobby. Bobby. Yes, dear. You're playing us on this sound. What? I cannot hear you. What do you say? This yeah, you're, that's why I can't understand you. I'm being scrambled too. Okay. Tom, tell him. Here. Let's keep on. Let's keep on uh, keeping on. Uh, yeah, he's not. While, yeah. while I still can. Okay. Now this information that I've got coming out of uh, Syria comes to us from Voltaire.net. I've worked with them before. They have people on the ground in Syria, and uh, they've got two things to report. The first is that uh, U.S. military intelligence was involved in this chemical attack. Look at this headline right here. U.S. military intelligence involved in chemical attack in Syria. Now it gets worse. These children, the ones that were killed, were kidnapped by Al-Qaeda. They weren't just in a neighborhood that had been targeted. These kids were kidnapped and put into a, into a specific area, whether it was in a room or whether it was just outside in a pen, I, I don't know. But these uh, children have been identified as the same ones that were abducted by al-Qaeda terrorists uh, uh, 200 miles away in the village of uh, Latkia. These are uh, Alawite children, Shiite children. These are not... Uh, these are not Sunni kids that would have been killed had the regime killed them. These are Alawite children that uh, these Al-Qaeda scum that Barack Obama is supporting kidnapped and put into a, a gas chamber just like the Nazis did to the Jews. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth Is Viral. Like The Truth Is Viral on Facebook and if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com Smack Runner Your game is through Smack Runner I'm talking to you